We have a great show for you today. We're in the wide receiver rankings, top 10 wide receivers. We're talking about them on the show today. And look, 44% of these guys bust every year. So we're going to break it all down, probably argue a little bit, figure out who's a guarantee, who's a little bit shaky. Make sure you like and subscribe and enjoy the show. You hungering for something new this summer? Hello Fresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy to follow directions. Your new favorite meal could be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, while you've been staying home, staying safe, maybe uh, maybe things got a little bit out of control with the snacking. And now is the time to get fit with Echelon. Echelon is the affordable way to get the workout equipment, the workout community, and an instructor's motivation right at the comfort of your own home. Echelon's fitness app provides you thousands of live and on-demand classes with great music from your favorite artists. You can work out anytime because the equipment's at your place. Day, night, crush your fitness goals. Just pick your class, climb the leaderboard, cheer each other on, and give it your all echelons full range of affordable workout equipment includes a stationary bike smart rowers sleek fitness screens or the auto folding treadmill they're all connected to provide the echelon experience and right now you can get the echelon ex3 bike risk-free for 30 days plus free shipping and assembly to get this offer uh, it's an exclusive offer with these free bonuses valued at 250 dollars go to echelonfit.com fantasy that's e c h e l o n f i t dot com slash fantasy for this free offer. Echelonfit dot com slash fantasy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Another spectacular day. Monday, August 9th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright, is here. This is going to be the best Monday, August 9th of all time, fellas. Whoa. Certainly of this year. Certainly of this year, but I'm I'm calling it now. Jason uh, Moore, present, accounted for. I'm I'm gonna be part of the greatest <laughs> show ever, at least definitely of this year on August 9th. But maybe Wait, I'll you're talk. going. See, I was just declaring that it's gonna be the best August 9th. You're going. It's oh. the best show. Well, yeah, yeah. That's what we do here. We do a show, and it's gonna be awesome. When you keep raising the bar, every show because we every show is the best show we've ever done. Is there a point where you simply we can't reach our own bar? Probably. Yeah, I mean you run out of oxygen at a certain <laughs> altitude. You know, it's like you can't climb up an infinite Mount Everest. So we'll have to we'll have to figure out where we die. It's important to make the claims <laughs> before the show has taken place, right? Because uh, there's just infinite upside at that. It's like uh, the way we talk about fantasy players right now. Yeah, there's no ceiling too high for Antonio Gibson for Mike. He can reach the stars. Yeah. Wide receiver ranking show today. Tons of NFL news to talk about. We have plenty of training camp hype and videos proliferating on Twitter where, you know, wide receivers are catching passes from their quarterbacks at camp. Have you heard about this? I've seen it, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's against no defenders. Sometimes it's like little out routes, and the crowd goes wild when they catch it. I saw uh, Zach Wilson throw a little out route to Corey Davis. Oh, boy, the oh, potential man. of that combination. The, the Falcons tweeted out about the chemistry between Matt Ryan and Kyle Pitts on a – it's just those two, and he threw it to a, the corner of the end zone, and oh, he man. caught it. He I'm, caught it with nobody else around. I'm going to need you to send that to me. Yeah, I, I remember warming up in our flag football league, and sometimes we didn't complete those passes. But if we had completed them, like then we would have be, been, been in the NFL. <laughs> um, but, no, lots to talk about. You can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. Uh, like and comment on there. Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. If you want to follow Mike, oh, I, you know, please do. Uh, mix, you know, mix it up on your Twitter feed at FF Hitman. 
Jason at Jason FFL. And then uh, I'm at Andy Holloway. I will only be tweeting in Comic Sans from from right now oh, moving man. forward. Yes. Uh, yes. I can't wait to talk about that. Is, is that in our news? I'm sure it is. All right. Let's get right into it. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Well, let's start with some exciting news. Uh, oh. For the stallion himself, Excellent. Bills quarterback Josh Allen has been signed to a six year, $258 million extension. I believe $150 million of that was guaranteed. Money, money, oh. money, money, money. Not quite Brooks' money, but we're getting there. We're getting there for Josh Allen. Um, Brooks remembers when he made his first $150 million. Yeah. He was 12 years old that day. <laughs> Heck of a lemonade stand. He <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> uh, but Josh Allen, long-term extension. Uh, there were rumors about this for a while. They had been talking. There you go. He's the quarterback in Buffalo. No questions asked for the next six, year, uh, six years. And so... I mean, what does this mean for fantasy? Nothing. We all we all knew he was locked in as their franchise quarterback, and while a running back getting paid can make a difference, a quarterback is all he's doing is setting a market for other quarterbacks. Justin Jefferson, day to day after an AC joint sprain, it looked a little scary. Could have been a collarbone. Mm -hmm. Could have been something that kept him out longer. Seems like they avoided major injury there. Julio Jones' leg injury is quote nothing major. Ian Rappaport talked about this. I've seen people talk about it. You know, Julio Jones has been a managed player for the last several years in terms of practices. He's the king of nothing major injuries. Right. He is only minor injury, uh, Julio Jones. But they, they're going to do this. I mean, he's, he's 33 years old, and he manages little injuries all the time, uh, maybe so he can skip practice in camp. But they, they'll – Hey, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, this was news. Uh, DJ Chark, surgery – for a hairline fracture of his finger, Urban Meyer says he expects him to play on week one. I have buried DJ Chark this offseason with agreement from you guys. Does this, I mean, matter much? It doesn't. We, we have seen uh, plenty of times, if you remember last season, several wide receivers would break their finger and they might miss a week. They might miss no time and come and play with it after that little surgery. So even though it sounds really, really bad, it's it's – you know, especially with the time before the season, this shouldn't be a worry. Uh, the reason DJ Chark is a worry is not due to the broken finger. It's I, due to I think it, it piles on DJ some, Chark. Some can't extra build worry. a rapport with a rookie quarterback. Exactly. Like if you on had the sideline, if you were holding out hope, I mean, like DJ Chark has impressive physical attributes, and there was a chance that he could be the guy. But when you're missing all this time and and LaVisca Chenault is getting all that hype, and Marvin Jones is is being quietly unappreciated, I think, by uh, by fantasy football players. This is not great for Chark. Yeah, I think the thing with Marvin Jones is that he was selected by this existing staff. You know, they went out and signed him for a purpose, so he could be more interesting than we're giving him credit for in the fantasy space. Agreed. Patriots tight end Hunter Henry injured his shoulder in Sunday's practice. Having an MRI, Ooh. it was uh, painful. He could miss some time this preseason. And Dalton Keene is already out. Does this change your viewpoint on the kind of uh, Swiss Army knife, uh, you know, Jonu Smith? You see the Jonu was getting carries? Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, if, of all the places to do that, um, we have a history of, of tight ends yeah. getting work out of the backfield in New England. Are we underappreciating his potential with the renewed offense? I, I don't think we are. Um, obviously, if Hunter Henry were to be out and this were a long-term injury, then then it would certainly move John o. Smith up the board. But I think Hunter Henry still uh, projects to be out there and, and splitting two tight ends, unless they're Gronk and Hernandez – they're going to eat into each other, and and um, I'll just spoil it right now. Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith are not Gronk and Aaron Hernandez, so mm. okay. Uh, okay. I don't I don't think it's I don't think there's enough offense to go around for two tight ends. All right, uh, Traquan Smith missed practice with an apparent leg injury. I don't remember. Have we brought that up on the show before? Yeah, we we mentioned that he's missing. I thought time. we did. Yeah, and 
there that whole wide receiver room is troubled right now. Uh, one of the big pieces of news was this morning, more Comic Sans <laughs> gas poured on the fire that is doubt for Michael Thomas. I mean, I'm seeing hashtags can't draft Mike going around. So and, explain what he did. Yeah, I mean, he basically went out and this morning tweeted a very wonderful Comic Sans written tweet. It says, they tried to damage your reputation. You saved theirs by not telling your side of the story. Mm -hmm. Man, I love high school. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun when I would write things like that, like, you know, total passive aggressive. I mean, the team did come out in the last week and talk about the fact that he didn't return phone calls. The, the medical staff couldn't reach him for months. And then once they finally did, he had to go get the surgery. Did you guys read that article? Yes. So, I mean, he had the opportunity to choose to have the surgery that he's undergoing now where he'll miss in-season time. He could have done it three, four months ago, chose a more conservative rehab route, didn't call the team back, according to this report, and then ended up having to get the surgery months later, costing the Saints. So and having, that's what this is a response to. And having said all of that, the worst thing that Michael Thomas has done was tweet out his passive aggressive statement in Comic Sans font. What you are a grown man, Michael Thomas. Like, have we're not all graphic designers, and that's fine. I'm not. A, I'm definitely not a graphic designer, but I know that you don't you don't send out tweets in papyrus or mm -hmm. Comic Sans. If Actually, you want to be treated with any sort of dignity. I feel like we can be agents of change here, right? We've got hundreds okay. of thousands of people listening. Don't use Comic Sans. Like, just don't. Let's, they, let's, put, know this. let's put Papyrus in there, too, because yes. I've seen too many restaurants choose Papyrus oh, as, yeah, for their, their, logo. as their default logo font because they, they get on the computer and they're like, I don't want this to be Arial or Times New Roman, so let's mix it up to, with one of the cool fonts. <laughs> and there's only so many default. It's Impact, Papyrus. Oh. But Comic Sans. To be fair to Papyrus, the first time you see it, you're like, oh, that's a that's an interesting, unique font. I'm sure that no one else has used this. <laughs> this is a font show. Yes. This yeah. is a font the show. Fantasy font balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, getting back to the news with Traquan Smith yeah. and everything going on there, it, it, it certainly does seem more and more and more likely that Adam Troutman is – an important target in the he offense. He's the, the only, one. he's the only guy <laughs> that we haven't heard of injuries and, and missing well, time. And, and Deontay Harris, DUI. Yes. Uh, Callaway. Also, he had missed some time. And then Marquez Callaway is kind of the, the player that is worth mentioning at this point. Okay, if he's, go check your dynasty waiver wire. It's possible that Callaway is just chilling out there. Darren Waller has missed. So they don't know any – just to be clear, the Saints don't know – who their wide receivers or quarterbacks are. So, so Not yet. Okay. Not uh, yet. Darren Waller has missed the last five practices for undisclosed reasons. Yeah, the uh, I, I was going to bring this up when we were talking about the good news with Justin Jefferson, Julio Jones, minor injuries, not worried. Um, every team's going to say whatever they want because you don't have to report th the truth about any injuries right now. Um, so we have no idea, and, and the, the Raiders don't have to tell us anything, but it's worth – monitoring and and noting that uh he has been you know gone for a week well Lutz could miss time to start the season he's one of the best fantasy kickers so be aware that they're they're trying out other kickers right now he may have a core muscle injury that could cost him time surgery yep. we don't know Falcons signed Deontay Foreman who is back in the league okay. oh, man and, Loved that, uh, dude. <laughs> wow, I didn't know this. This is breaking to me. Cardinals signed Ito Smith. Yes, we did. Oh, my <laughs> word. You, you excited, Jason? That's the grossest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> you follow up this great news of Deonta Foreman signing with an NFL team, and then you've got to tell me that the Cardinals... Oh, that's gross. Well, Deontay Foreman recovering from an Achilles injury never really was the same. And Ito Smith playing as though he already had an Achilles injury. Two of them, yeah. Um, all right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. <laughs> Sleeper is currently by far the largest Dynasty platform, extremely customizable. Uh, we love Dynasty because you play all year long. You get that communication with your league mates. So definitely check that out. Today's a wide receiver show. And unless I'm missing other news, are we ready to move forward? Are we ready to get into it? Let's we go. Are. 
wide receivers. All right. Today is our top 10 wide receiver rankings show. We'll be getting into all the position groups over the course of the week, five days a week. And uh, we're looking at our half PPR rankings. And in truth, these top 10 shows, I mean, there are things that we already know about these players, right? They're there for a reason. You're familiar with them. These are the elites of the elites. It's hard to, you know, at, at this point, we are splitting hairs over a number of these players. So take it with a grain of salt when we say something negative about them, because at the end of this episode, they're all still in our top 10. Fair, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and really, there's, I mean, all the all the the pluses of these players should be widely known. That's that's why they're, you know, so highly ranked. So we're going to talk about maybe the question marks and uh, where to think about where, where to think about the bad. Well, and, and the truth is, despite their rankings. Over the last five years, there is a 44% bust rate. So that would be any of these players finishing outside the top 15, not up to expectations. Um, However, 55% of those 55! were due to injury. And you you just can't. We know this. We can't predict injury. Uh, so that's just the, the luck of the draw in fantasy. Yep. You were just trying to mitigate risk with your picks. You're trying to get the best uh, level of guarantee possible in fantasy which is only a certain level right you can't guarantee against injury but you can take a look at the whole situation Devonte adams number one not a surprise here there was doubt there were question marks there were problems brewing with aaron Rodgers. but mm -hmm. at this point in time we know that rogers is back and we know that Devonte adams is the best 148 targets in only 14 games last year 1,374 yards, 18 touchdowns, uh, and that's with, like I said, missing half a week three, weeks four and five, scored 10 plus, 10 plus touchdowns in four or five seasons. Yeah, I mean, his uh, missing those, those games, he was on pace for 1,668 yards and 22 touchdowns. The guy's a touchdown machine. You can't stop him at the goal line. They, with Aaron Rodgers, they choose to – go to that play as often as they run it. Um, obviously this is an offense that's going to uh, this is an offense that's going to score a lot of points even if even if they regress uh, closer to you know a, a high-end NFL average, which they will, that's still going to be a great offense. And so when you have that level of target volume, that level of consistency, if you if you have uh, if you're on join the foot, if you're a footland supporter, you go to his profile on our website and you could see the game log highlighted it's just unbeatable I mean having Devonte Adams when he's got Aaron Rodgers is a true unfair advantage so I think the question is where do you where are you willing to actually pull the trigger and avoid a running back and take that first round wide receiver right over the last 10 years or so wide receivers drafted number one have been more stable than the quarterbacks and running backs so that is the question like where do you fault anybody for pulling the trigger on him as high as let's say number three, number three overall? Yeah, I personally would not do that. But it, like to me, I'm looking at the running backs. You know, McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara, Henry, those guys for sure. I'm taking over him. Then it Zeke, I would as well. Aaron Jones. <laughs> Interesting enough, I mean, Saquon Barkley might be that. That that tear break for me, uh, just of the the concerns at the beginning of the season. But then you also, if you're drafting Barkley and realize it's going to take some time for him to really get going, but after at least a month at the longest, you should have real Saquon Barkley back, and then you have a, a an advantage of a, of a three down running back. I'm still taking Travis Kelsey over Devonte Adams because there's only one. Uh, there's only one Travis Kelsey, and even though Devonte Adams projects out to be the the best wide receiver for us, there's still you know five at least five guys where you'd be you'd be super happy to take them as the first wide receiver off the board. Yeah, I I love Devonte Adams. I can't sing his praises high enough. And yet, when I draft him, uh, you know if if I'm near the you know. Uh, the eight spot or something like that, and I, I pull the trigger on him. I I usually I usually don't like my team as much as when I can have the first round stud running back because I you've I been able to stack wide receivers. 
Yeah, those middle Later round on. wide receivers are 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 just phenomenal. So it's it's really difficult. This is a question for you. Um, while you're playing, while you're getting ready for your drafts, go to sleep or do a mock draft and draft them. Uh, see see if you like your team grabbing Devontae Adams or this next guy, Tyree Kill. It does seem like if you take Adams early, you are boxed into running back round two, which is the last position you want to be in. Or at least it, it seems like you might be. See, and for me, it's it's even scarier in round three or round four because let's say you go to round three and you did go running back round two. Now I feel like I'm boxed into I, my second running, in, unless I want to go... I would what about rather a three go, wide receiver league. Certainly, that that. Would you take Adams? Yes. Does it, is it worthwhile taking him even one overall in a league like that? Would I, you ever take him there? I wouldn't take him one overall because Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, those guys are just too. Uh, they they score too many points so in then one. Would position. you go the one hundred three? Yeah, I, I think I would be willing. willing to. Um, uh, probably not my personal strategy, but I I wouldn't fall. If you're a three wide receiver full PPR, um, wide receivers become far more important. All right, uh, Tyree Kill is number two on the list. Uh, there is consensus agreement with these two players at the top of the board. 1,276 yards, 15 touchdowns last year. Uh, two rushing touchdowns, finished at number two at the position. He has matured into kind of, you know, the days of former Tyree Kill being explosive and not consistent are gone, 135 targets. He is the kind of player that can completely win you a week and a half, right? I mean, he had yeah, which he had he a did. game with two, uh, what was it, thirteen for two sixty nine and three last year. So yeah, and most of that was in the first half. Yeah, so he he's very fun to have on your fantasy roster, but again, you're going to have to spend up on him. His average draft position is the eighth pick in the first round. And Mike, if you're heads up with Tyreek and his teammate Travis Kelsey, you're going Kelsey. I am going Kelsey. Yes. Uh, since 2017, he's tied with Devontae Adams for the most multi-touchdown games, so those are the weak-winning type of games. The one kind of interesting caveat to Tyreek is he has been dominant on the road. Um, 17 fantasy points a game on the road for Tyreek Hill. Yeah, he's the bizarre. best road-wide receiver ever. Yeah. Uh, he loves hotel living. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Yeah, that's pretty you good. Get down, room get service. Get room service. Uh, the one negative I would I would bring up with Tyree Kill and and just a, a slight bit of caution. You 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 brought this up a second ago, Andy, in in the fact that he was. It seems like he put the consistency problems away. Right, last season extremely consistent. However, I've I've brought this up several times. Consistency is not a very consistent metric. It goes back and forth. Volume is a better indicator. And when you're talking about 130 targets versus Devontae Adams, who could be 170 targets, um, you're, you're, you're more likely to have that come in spurts. And I, I don't view Tyreek as a super consistent player, despite him doing it this year. R remember 2018, he was the wide receiver one. He was the best wide receiver in fantasy football, and he had seven games outside the top 24. He, the, right. the variance can come at what, the very least. Was there any temptation to put him ahead of Adams once you knew Rodgers was coming back? Like, Or was that definitive? Like, Ro Adams was going to be at the one spot. Adams was f definitely the one for me. Um, if this is a dynasty league, I think Tyreek is, is my number one overall player in dynasty. Yeah, there are question marks about the future of Adams in Green Bay as well as Rodgers, whereas Mahomes is in, what, a 40-, 50-year contract? Is that what it was? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, minimum. Okay. <laughs> um, Adams has never played a f one year. He's played a full season. He's always banged up for a couple games. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So um, those two guys at the very tippy top of the wide receiver rankings, you know, you're going to get production. Yep. And before we get to number three, I want to thank Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. Hey. With Hello Fresh, you're going to get uh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth watering. Seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. I hate going to the grocery store. I hate figuring out what is for dinner. Um, and I love cooking. Like, I actually enjoy making a meal and having fresh food and uh, eating healthier. Eating the food. Eating fresh food. Like, it, <laughs> I love eating the food. It's my favorite part. But all the hassle, all the stuff you don't like is taken away by HelloFresh. And they have meals for everyone. You could go family style. You go healthy. You can go vegetarian. Whatever you like to eat, they're going to give it right to your door, right for you. You're going to absolutely love it. Um, and, and it's a great value. It's 28% cheaper 
than shopping at your local grocery store and 72% cheaper than if you're getting a restaurant meal. So go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers14 and use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14 and use the code footballers14 for 14 free, free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. We also want to thank IP Vanish for supporting this podcast. I'm sure we've all felt this way, like you're being followed around on the internet. Somebody's um, watching me. Maybe the advertisers know a little too much about you. You know, you it's like you whisper something in a back room, and yes. and then the, all the internet ads start to sell you something that you've been thinking about. Look, our sponsor, I Pre Vanish VPN. It's here to help you take back your privacy, so you can be anonymous on the internet, and not deal with that crap. Super easy to use. You turn it on with the click of a button. It runs seamlessly in the background. It helps uh, protect you while you're browsing the web. And they have 24-7 support in case you run into any issues. So we love that. Go to ipvanish.com slash footballers and claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. That's for a full year. And this is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotion. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best. They are rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it is ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Moving forward in our wide receiver rankings, our top 10 wide receiver show, we finally have... A disparity on our rankings. We did it. I buried him. <laughs> Stephon Diggs comes in at number three, but way, 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 way down at four for Jason. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't realize you had him at three, Mike. Is this a recent change, or do I not pay attention to you enough? You don't pay attention. Okay. Last year, 166 targets. So piggybacking on what you said about the volume being an indicator of future success. 127 catches, 1,535 yards, and eight touchdowns. He was the wide receiver three last year, and those two other guys, I meant to bring it up. I mean, 18 touchdowns for Adams, 15 for Hill. Sure, you look at Adams and you say he's probably a guarantee for double digit, but there's a big difference between 11 and 18 on the fantasy stats. So yeah. uh, Stephon Diggs only had eight last year. That number could absolutely go up he could easily easily catch double digit touchdowns with with josh stallion and his ability that 100 percent he could be a double double digit touchdown guy huge huge breakout season though for him last year in buffalo and now his quarterback's been paid he's been paid um what can go wrong i mean it, that, i was gonna say i don't think anything can go wrong you so of everything we have seen for josh allen Knock on wood. over his uh his him in college, him in the pros, and making that absolute ludicrous jump from from two years ago to to last year, what we saw where he went from, yeah, he's out there helping his team win games. I'm not knocking that, but the way he did it was far different than what happened last year when he, when he was playing at an MVP level. I was going to say he was an MVP level quarterback. Yeah, he was, he was sensational last year. Is there any chance that – that just happened to be the best season that Josh Allen will ever put out there. And he will regress, maybe not to the two years ago form, but it, like you see a you see some errat, more erratic throws. You see a drop in that completion percentage. You you think that there is a zero percent chance that there's any sort of regression for Josh Allen. So I I th I think there w will be be regression statistically this year, but I don't think there's going to be regression in in the talent, in the skill. I I, I think he leveled up and it's legitimate. Um, I don't think he's going to start playing erratically or inaccurately. Um, I think where the issue could come up, and I've I've brought this up before, uh, in the debate between Josh Allen and Kyler Murray, is that I feel like what the Buffalo Bills did last year was, I mean, the max of what they could do. Their offense was pretty much perfect, especially for fantasy and for the passing game. They were 60-40 pass to run. Um, they The running game didn't exist. Right. So I do see that if the offense 
from an NFL level gets better, and they're able to run the ball more. There's been some more uh, Zach Moss hype in camp uh, recently. If they were to become a little bit more balanced, throw the ball less, I could see the statistics coming down a little bit in the passing for Josh Allen and for Stephon Diggs. All that being said, I, I do agree with Andy. There's there's no way it goes wrong outside of injury. It's not like, it's not like Diggs is all of a sudden going to come out and be down at 125 targets or catch 50% of the ball. It's like the offense... It runs through digs. Yeah. And they were successful. Like what you're talking about, maybe there's some more balance, but they don't need more balance. No. They, you know, and there were I five, don't want them to get it. There was 572 different passes that look like a leveled up Josh Allen last year. That would be kind of my contention is that you just can't go do it consistently for that long without there being, I don't know, something to reward with $150 million. So, and these look great in camp from all report so I, I do think it's leveled up uh Calvin Ridley comes in at number four I have him at six Jason has him up at three Mike at four probably hurts Mike a little bit to not be the highest on Calvin Ridley it does sorry about that Mike. it does I should probably move him up well he's Jason's my guy um you're gonna have to take him to two Mike <laughs> <laughs> just a competition between yeah. your rankings he finished as the f wide receiver four last year yep 90 for 13, 74, and 9. Um, 143 targets. I mean, I've tried to find a reason to doubt him all offseason. I guess I doubt him having him at 6. <laughs> that, yeah. that actually is doubting Calvin Ridley. Yeah, you, you say he's going to have a worst year this year without Julio. Um, obviously, we got to see him in several games without Julio. He, he was in that small sample, a better wide receiver, fantasy speaking, more yards, more targets, more touchdowns, more fantasy points. So I do think he is the clear cut one. He should have 160 plus targets. He is unbelievably talented. I mean, you just watch the film and he's somehow always wide open. Like you need, I, I need to watch more all 22 film because I never see it. I just, the ball ends up being thrown and then there's didn't Calvin have, Ridley wide open 20 yards. Didn't down he the have field. a goose last year? Like a full zero point game, uh, that I'm trying to remember. I thought he had he a did, been very two close years to a. He did in week four, but he also he had five targets in that game and left with an injury. Yeah, but that was late. I think that was really late in that 64 game. Sixty four percent of the snaps. Yeah, he. So there you go. I mean, he played. I remember that game where it was like, what? What's happening? You yeah. know, he had the number two and number one finish in the first two weeks, and all of a sudden he had disappeared. Um, no, I mean Ridley is great. I think I like Kyler Murray. And Kirk Cousins a little bit more than I like Matt Ryan. Yeah. So that attachment for Hopkins and, and Jefferson have those guys a little bit higher than Ridley. But um, I just don't know. It's a tough division, right? They were the basement last year. The offense is – they're just signing a running back a week to try to figure out who's going to compliment Mike Davis. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's – you have a guaranteed baseline with Calvin Ridley. The only question mark I think you would have would be, you know, does he compete in the touchdown totals because is the offense good enough to get him there with some of the other elite players? Probably does because historically that's what he's done. Yeah, he's been he's been uh, solid around the end zone and finding the end zone from far away both. Uh, I, I, new I offensive think, coordinator, too. Yeah, there is change here. There is a new offensive coordinator. Matt Ryan is not a spring chicken, and I don't think it is a 0% chance. Where that does that expression come from? Is that when they're born? Is that in spring? Yeah, I would imagine that most chickens you must have be had, born You've in had spring. chickens before? When were well, they? I did not breed them. Oh. I, I ate their eggs. So, <laughs> so Sorry, little guys. You, <laughs> You're you, delicious. You didn't wait to see if they'd hatch in spring, did you? No, no. Um, sorry, little oh, guys. You're delicious. It's a spring omelet. <laughs> yeah, it's a spring omelet. Uh, oh, man. That means it's a real young one. Matt but, Ryan's not a spring omelet. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say this. I definitely think Diggs and Hopkins are safer than Calvin Ridley. Um, because of Kyler Murray, because of Josh Allen. It is not a 0% chance that Matt Ryan hits the wall of his career this season and uh, falls off. It's happened to every quarterback at some point. Now, none of us are projecting that right now, um, but he is the worry for me for Calvin Ridley, is Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan? Ryan? Let's, yeah. let's uh, just to educate our listeners, because that's what we try to do. The original of the phrase did come from the fact that Farmers found out chickens born in the spring 
brought better prices than the old ones that went through winter. Mm. So are you saying Matt Ryan is an old chicken that went through winter? He's a wintered veteran. Okay. They call him Matty Ice. Oh, because he's been through winter? Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. Oh. Mike, I mean, I, I just I have a, I have no doubt that Matt Ryan is going to be perfectly fine. I, I didn't see anything last year that says otherwise. I mean, statistically, he's right in line with the rest of his career. Matt Ryan, it, it's a new offense, definitely, but you already have – what we have seen with Matt Ryan – in new offense after new offense after new offense is he always has a great connection with his wide receiver one from Julio back to Roddy White. Like Matt Ryan is a, is a great quarterback, and Calvin Ridley led the NFL with the most air yards, most targets of 20-plus yards down the field. Uh, Calvin Ridley goes deep. Matt Ryan is still more than capable of throwing that pass, so I, I have no concerns about Calvin Ridley, and Ridley – to me, can easily finish as the overall number, overall wide receiver one, and you're able to get him in the, like the second half of the second round. So he is, he is one of my favorite players. ADP. -wise. So you would say he's not being drafted at his ceiling. His ceiling is higher. Correct. All right. Hopkins comes in at five. We all actually have him at five. Uh, he's being drafted as the wide receiver four right now in the second round. 160 targets last year. Finished at five and had a 1,407 yards. And here's the, the key number, only six touchdowns in this offense. So the 115 catches, the 1,400 yards, that was the uh, that supplied the fantasy value for your team. You couldn't count on touchdowns from Hopkins. I think part of that we'd all attribute to uh, to Cliff and, and, and having issues with play calling around the end zone, not putting the ball in his playmaker's hands. And, that's and even not a changing. And Kyler. And, and Kyler. Uh, you Running know, the ball in and making mistakes. Exactly. You get it around the goal line, and he has an extra weapon that can score touchdowns on the ground. And, you know, it's, it, we talk about that with uh, Damian Harris. The, Cam Newton will vulture those touchdowns. Well, if you run them in, you're not passing them in either. Um, and, you know. Well said. Thank you. Uh, you had 20 passing touchdowns his rookie year 26 last year that's it's a little di disappointing I think that um you know you would hope that he levels up this season gets up into the 30s for passing touchdown if he does he's going to pay off in in fantasy and, and Hopkins will be the primary benefactor I agree and uh yeah you had a route bush problem last year if you yeah, remember it was, wasn't a tree and I mean I, I still have Hopkins at five and it's you can't doubt the the production that he put up last year, but it's so frustrating uh, to see the way that he is utilized in this Arizona offense. For fantasy purposes, last year he finished outside of the top 36 far more than elite wide receiver should. And all reports out of Arizona uh, training camp, he's going to be used the exact same way. He's going to be on his side. There will be no creativity moving these guys around. He'll be over. Uh, in the X position, AJ Green will be over in the Y, and that is that for the Cliff offense. As opposed to what you see with Adams, where he's being moved, with with moved all elite all wide receivers. I mean, you you move him around from left to right. Sometimes you put him in the slot. Like you find mismatches. What if you find out that like they wanted to do that, and it was Hopkins? Like he's more comfortable. What if what if he said, I want to be over here? I, I will say this. Either way, no matter whose decision it is, he's been great. <laughs> he's, he's, he's dominating from his route bush. He would dominate yeah. if they move him around. I, I don't think that's a... Any concerns with an, another elite talent on the other side of the... <laughs> Zero <laughs> concerns of any elite talent on the other side. Oh, um, man. AJ Green's been catching a lot of touchdowns in camp um, when, when he's been out there. Yeah, I would probably bet on more multi-touchdown games from Green this year than Hopkins. I would take that bet. How many bets should I put on AJ Green in the course of a year? Then I've, I've all of them. Have more than one. Me. Is are they all? Are, are they all protected against injury? No. no. Are right. you kidding me? Um, okay, let's let's move forward here. Justin Jefferson comes in at six. I have him at four. Mike at six. Jason at seven. Last year, eighty-eight for fourteen hundred and seven. Didn't even get started till week three. Finished at six at the position. Rookie records. Through and through, 22 years old, um, better at home. In fact, all his touchdowns came at home. Interesting. Yeah, that I don't, probably anomalous at this point of his career, but interesting nonetheless. I 
don't see a way for it to go wrong outside of injury for Justin Jefferson. Too explosive, too much separation. Best deep passer in terms of, um, you know, Kirk Cousins throwing the ball to him down the field where he is getting more separation than anybody at that level of the defense. So I have confidence, but we're getting into a lower, you know, level of wide receiver here where there are at least viable reasons why it can go wrong. Certainly. Do you see a uh, in the range of outcomes and upside, do you see a wide receiver one finish possible for Justin Jefferson? Overall number one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, d I do too. He, I'm, the, I'm the lowest on him, but I, I think that his, his talent was uh, clearly evident. What's your percentage he, chance for him? I mean, just to for, uh, for Mike. It, it's, yeah. it's not high. It would be below 10%, you know, 5%. That's about chance. where I would be too. Okay. Um, okay. But, and, and, I'm, and I'm lower on Justin Jefferson because I'm lower on the passing game from, in, in its entirety. Uh, we've talked about this a lot ad nauseum in the, in the offseason, just how many points the Vikings had to put up. I mean, they were they were giving up 35, 40, 50, 50 points. Like, you know, it was not the normal Mike Zimmer defense that you see. And so then you got to air it out. You got to get the yards. And Justin Jefferson was unbelievable. So, yes, he could finish as the wide receiver one. He could just come in and maybe he's the next Jerry Rice. I mean, we don't know how high Justin Jefferson can go career-wise. And so I will not put a cap on his ceiling but if I'm projecting probabilities when I look at the Minnesota Vikings I think their offense takes a step back from the counting stats that they achieved last year uh, on a per game basis and Justin Jefferson will probably have fewer yards than he had in his rookie year I think it'll be more of the same they were 11th in points per game last year um, I don't see them transitioning their offense away from Jefferson uh, Mike, you have him at six, third round ADP. You happy with that? Wide uh, receiver eight off the board. So yeah, I don't know. I don't have a problem. We're actually with it. higher than the ADP. And you know, I I kind of highlighted it when I was uh, taking away from Adam Thielen in the in the ice show that once Justin Jefferson really emerged because he had a couple good weeks at the beginning, but it wasn't until week ten that it was there was a really clear change and all of a sudden Justin Jefferson's pulling in nearly 30% of the targets from, you know, weeks 10 through the end of the season. He averaged over 10 targets a week. Like that, that is absolutely absurd volume. Justin Jefferson is being drafted at a spot where even though I have him at seven, I, I love taking him there because the upside is tremendous. Last year he had seven touchdowns to Adam Thielen's 14. Right. If I mean, if if those go the other way and Justin Jefferson becomes the one, uh, outstanding upside. DK Metcalf comes in at seven. Jason, the highest with him at six. What do you like about Metcalf coming into the year? I like touchdowns. That's what I like. <laughs> uh, they score a lot of points. They make me fantasy happy. Um, the reality is... Uh, they make me fantasy happy? They make me fantasy happy, baby. Uh <laughs> Okay. Russell Wilson's quarterback. Russell Wilson's going to be a top 12 guy. He's going to throw for th around 35 touchdowns, and DK Metcalf is uh, someone that makes every other human look stupid. So, uh, I mean, it's you don't want to overthink these things. Uh, you can talk about the nuance of – New offensive coordinator. Uh, new offensive coordinator, specific to change because they want to be more run happy. Um, the, Rashad Penny is – coming on to form so maybe they can really have the two-headed monster they've wanted for the last several years run more pass less they've talked about uh getting the ball out of the hands of russell wilson quicker meaning maybe shorter routes for dk metcalf there's a lot of different ways you can paint the picture but in the end the reason i'm high on him is just because i think he's the clear number one for a great offensive quarterback not just a one-trick pony red zone uh beast so yeah, I'm with you. If you go running back first round, you could take Metcalf. He's in the middle of the second round right now. Um, he is going higher than where we have him ranked. Are you comfortable with him as your wide receiver one? I'm comfortable with him as my wide receiver one if I got him in the third. Right. Which uh, because if I go running back, running back, and DK Metcalf, I'm happy. But to avoid you know a Clyde Edwards-Alaire or an Antonio Gibson or one of these guys that's in the second round to take a DK – 
I'm I haven't been drafting him as much as you know Jefferson falls lower, and I think the ceiling is just as high there. Yeah, his his ADP he's in a he's in a bad spot uh, for me because I would rather I'm with Jason. I'd rather take a one of those running backs that happens to fall into the second round or Calvin Ridley if I'm taking a wide receiver in that spot. Allen Robinson comes in at eight. He's going as the wide receiver eleven in the th late third round, so he could end up. Same question with Robinson. Are you happy with him as your one if you go running back, running back? Yeah. If, if yes. Most everyone that we're talking about, I want them to be my third pick because my first two went great. That's what I want. Last year, 102 for 1250 and six. He finished at 12. So we do have him ranked ahead of his where he finished last year in 16 games. I've done a lot of reading about Bears camp and what's happening there. Uh, I walked away from that research strongly convinced that Andy Dalton's the quarterback? For how long? That question is an impossible answer when you have a magician as your head coach. Budget magician. But Andy Dalton is, he's been called the starter. He has played up to that level in camp in a very pronounced way. He's been very good. And so it got me thinking about what does upside mean? Because I love Darnell Mooney, right? Like it's Robinson and Mooney and everybody right. else in camp is the best thing for Robinson and Mooney good Andy Dalton as opposed to a quarterback transition partway through the year? Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And for Darnell Mooney, it certainly is. It's very rare for a rookie quarterback to come in and support two wide receivers for fantasy. That doesn't happen a lot. Um, and the reality is Andy Dalton supported – he. It's so funny because he was such a huge disappointment. I mean, Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup, these guys were going to crush, and they all disappointed because of Andy Dalton. But they didn't suck. They were they were good. I mean, CeeDee Lamb and right. Amari Cooper were good for fantasy in general, just bad compared to Dak. And I think that Andy Dalton, 33-year-old version of Andy Dalton, it's probably Allen Robbins' best quarterback he's ever played with. That's that's kind of where I'm at. And, like, I had to dig in. Does he Be still have the beard? That's a good oh, question. Oh, great question. Very important question. Uh, producers, please get on that. I mean, Dalton, you better keep that beard. The red beard? Yeah. Uh, I had to dig into it because, you know, fantasy Twitter and the, the, the hype train, they're going to show you sidearm passes from Justin Fields. Which that pass was awesome. Which was great. <laughs> but when you dig into what's happening at camp, you know, it's bit, there's been some growing pains for Fields, right? It's like of one course. day he looks good. One day he looks like he's got a long way to go. But it seems like Dalton's been very consistent. And the Bears fans I talk to are very happy that they at least have the luxury of bringing him along at an appropriate pace. Now, Dalton could force the issue for them. But it just made me think, like, if you got good Andy Dalton, that could be the best thing for Robinson. could be the best thing for Mooney um, and for the Bears overall, at least in year one. So Alan Robbins, maybe some more upside for Robinson than we even give him credit for. Yeah, I mean, I uh, the, the upside is is it, it's, it's an ironic word to use with him because, you know, Justin Jefferson can finish as the wide receiver one, absolutely. Uh, Alan Robinson cannot. Right. Alan, it, it, just because the offense, the touchdowns, the the – uh, explosive nature. That's not happening. But here is what's happening: 151 targets, 151 targets, 154 targets, 151 tar targets. The, he demands the ball so much that he can't really finish outside of wide receiver 15. Like he's like wide receiver 10 to 15. He's as uh, safe a wide receiver as as there is. He like. You, we keep asking the question, are you are you happy with him as your wide receiver one? And my answer is, yes, I'm happy, but I'm not thrilled. And for, for exactly what you were talking about, Jason, where, uh, I mean, you have the next guy on our, our list, which Keenan is, Allen. is ridiculous. Because, Jay, Jason, seriously, wide receiver 13 for Keenan Allen? Look, I stat these players out and let the chips fall where they fall. I'll take have a look. Have you thought that your statistics suck? I, I have Keenan never Allen, thought man. that. So, I mean, th this is a player that we both Goodness. prefer to Allen Robinson. Keenan yes. comes in at nine. Um, I am with you, Mike. I think the feeling you get when Allen Robinson is locked in as your one is just kind of like, all right, sure, okay. Yeah. Um, and that's sad for Allen. <laughs> <But, laughs> it, it is. Uh, Robinson, that is. Now, Keenan Allen, on the other hand, 
We do have him higher at eight uh, in our rankings, Mike, and then Jason at 13, which, look, I respect the philosophy. You you stat players out according to how you believe they're going to perform, and then you don't necessarily freak out when the rankings come back the way they do. And speaking to that gap mm -hmm. uh, to uh, defend or enlighten um, – <laughs> The, the the players. How, you, how are you taking it? Are you players, enlightening or are you defending? Well, no, that's up to you to decide. Okay. Um, whether uh, the players between Allen Robinson and Keenan are McLaurin, AJ Brown, Amari Cooper, CD Lamb, like really great options. There's not a large gap, but the reason he's behind them, they're both going to have 150 plus targets. They both have the opportunity for touchdowns, but I don't think double digits is really where they're at. The difference is Keenan Allen works closer to the line of scrimmage. So on a yards per reception level, he's going to need more than Allen Robinson will in a half PPR. If this is full PPR, uh, they're they're probably right next to each other. Yeah, I mean, it, very easy math here. 100 catches last year for just 992 yards for Keenan Allen, and that's with what was really an impressive year from Justin Herbert, who did stretch the field when he had the opportunity to do so. Um, and so, that was also it, he actively missed two games and <laughs> in, wait, in actively act, missed because he was out. Right, and he okay. inactively missed uh, one game where he just he demanded to the world. Uh, oh, play that me, game, play me. Where and then he caught you, one pass. You shriveled up into like a sad, uh, yeah, sad man was, under because that was the uh, covered not, under the stairs. The How are you not? penalizing him in your rankings for that move he did to you personally because i looked into my heart jason and i found forgiveness for an elite wide receiver that just means he won a title with him in previous years he told everyone that's that's exactly what it means he told everyone play me i'm gonna be awesome and then didn't play uh volume is but, guaranteed for keenan Allen. but the point that's is, the nice thing about a mid third round pick 146 targets in essentially 13 games and Justin Herbert was a rookie and will now be better. Also, you, your also Austin. Is, is no, undying. no, no. Hold on. Uh, okay. Austin Eckler will be back. Demand a number of targets behind the line of scrimmage as well. Didn't play a lot with Austin Eckler last year. New head coach, new offensive coordinator. So there are some variables there. And the ceiling for Keenan is not the same as Ridley. It's not the same as Jefferson. It's not the same as Metcalf. So there, that would be kind of the, you know, you have to decide as a fantasy player what kind of wide receiver one you want on your team because Keenan is not all of the kinds. Is that fair? Yeah, sure. absolutely. A.J. Brown at 10. Wow, we all have him there. Man. Looky there. A.J. Brown's at 10. Um, finished at 11 last year. Look, I, I, I think he's going to have the same stat line as last season. I really do. I think 100 targets, 70 catches, 1,000 yards, and – Double-digit touchdowns. Um, missed a couple games last year. Julio's going to demand targets. He just will by being always open and mm -hmm. a dominant physical force on the field. Could threaten some of the touchdown totals, but the numbers that you're looking for from Brown are big plays. They're, um, you know, breaking a tackle and taking it to the house. It's over the top. It's, um, I just don't think it's going to be – that ceiling of top five is removed with Julio's addition, but – Otherwise, you should be really happy with Brown. Yeah, prior to Julio coming to town, I mean, the, the ceiling of being the wide receiver one overall was certainly within reach. Yeah. He, his talent is there to do it, and I think uh, Ryan Tannehill could support that. Uh, but as you brought up, Julio Jones is going to have a lot of success, and if Julio Jones, you know, grabs an 80-yard catch, those yards are no longer available for A.J. Brown. So it, it's just... Can he loan them out? Oh man, that'd be great! Just after the game, a little shifting around of stats. Yeah, they just, we would come oh, doing. I was come too short of a hundred. Can I get two of your yards? <laughs> <laughs> what is the the technical stat line if Julio takes a, a pass seventy nine yards and laterals it to AJ Brown on the one? I mean, he'll get the touchdown. Yeah, but, but that's not a seventy nine. Does yard he pass. get one? Receiving it, it's a rushing, yard? No, it's a rushing. Oh, yard, rushing. It's yard. a rush. So Julio think, gets no credit. for I think that, you're right. right. I think you're right. So it'd be a one yard rush for mm -hmm. AJ Brown, right? Hmm. Unless he goes, unless he taps it forward, in which case it's illegal. Yeah, it's <laughs> illegal double pass. Yes, but he gets nothing. All right. Um, what you're not getting with AJ Brown is volume, guaranteed volume. You're probably going to have more games where he disappears, especially on a year where Julio may, he may be the efficiency master of a Tannehill game, and it could be Julio Henry and AJ Brown. You're going, wait, what happened? 
I think that'll happen at least three or four times this year uh, without question. There is also the kind of overarching like, hey, when will they regress as an offense? Like we thought it was last year. And they lost their offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. He's now the head coach of uh, the Atlanta Falcons, and we, we they they hired internally. Um, so hopefully everything stays the same. But that is another um, you know variable in the mixture here. Yeah, no question. And uh, like I brought up earlier, forty eight percent of his touchdowns have come from thirty plus yards out. So you are he is a big play receiver that I think with Julio's addition does not have the chance at massive volume. So that's why he's at ten. Yep. Um, who are you most worried about busting from this top 10 list? Is, is there one player that you think, oh no, like, is it Metcalf or Jefferson? Are those the two at the top of that list? Just because it's, they're younger and less established. I mean, if anyone is, what do you, what are we calling a bust falling down to what wide receiver range? 15 or later since you're taking them in the top 10. So that's not a, that's not a crazy bust. Let's call it twenty or later. Yeah, let's. Okay. Because fifteen let's, or later, I, I'm I'm you're, probably going to go okay. Keenan um, because he's he's close there. But um, if we're talking about more of an outright, uh, really disappointing season, well, twenty or lower. For me, it's AJ Brown. Yeah, AJ Brown makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's between him and and maybe Alan, Metcalf. I'd say Allen Robinson. For me. Um, okay. Just because we saw the second half of the year. I think Metcalf was the wide receiver 24 in the last eight weeks. And if, if that That's is true. the offense they put forward, uh, I think it's possible. So insane where you had DK Metcalf through like the first eight games averaging nearly 100 receiving yards a game. To go from that to what they put up in the second half, so bizarre. Any of these wide receivers' dynasty windows closing? Like would you be actively trading them in dynasty? Like So I – I am currently and my my plan. I'll tell you guys, you're in the league and whatnot. I'm I'm in somewhat of a rebuild, a soft rebuild. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a team that can. Soft rebuild. I'm not tearing it down to the nubs. <laughs> that's a that's a good description. Uh, you're, you're leaving up one wall exactly. because there will be tax savings because now it is Look, now it is a remodel and not a. That's fresh, exactly what it is. If you go inside is, the house, you can see the studs. That's exactly what it is. I've got like my you know my my Chris Godwin, C.D. Lamb yeah, wall. One wall. That corner is intact, <laughs> and now I'm. I'm working pieces. But, How's your running back wall? But, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, <laughs> at some point this year, when a contender needs it, uh, try to trade Allen Robinson because he's going to be great, great this year. He's still young enough to have value. But in my position, I want more youth. So I'm going to try to trade him for a, a, a high-end prospect and a pick. All right. Are you, like, actively pitching us right now for no. a trade? No, not at all. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I heard that he's going to be awesome part. Yeah, I feel like you're talking him up even more. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're no. trying. You're using the platform of the show specifically for your trade purposes for our. Mike, dynasty. what do you think the All odds? All I do is win, win, <laughs> win. Uh, what are the odds that Robinson signs a deal with Chicago long term and then is paired with Fields and then makes you excited about the future? Uh much higher than they were. Uh, before the 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 draft pick of Justin Fields, I would put it at you know, let's go uh, thirty thirty five percent. Ooh, that is not high. I am so all about Darnell Mooney and dynasty leagues right now. I get that. Uh, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. Brooks, what do we have going on tomorrow? By the way, tomorrow <clears throat> more wide receiver <laughs> rankings. <laughs> You sounded like you were just what are you, trying snacking? to get the headset back on. Like, <laughs> what's going on over there? Were you eating a club sandwich back he was, there? He was in the bathroom. Had to run back. Like, oh, they called me. He dove. He put the headset back on. Uh, what's was, uh, the, what's tomorrow? Dry in my hair. What's tomorrow? <laughs> we're getting into the really interesting names of wide receivers. Okay. That, so another wide receiver ranking tier. show. Yes, uh, sir. The more complicated tier of wide receivers. Uh, was Brooks eating an apple salad during the show? That's what I want to know. Is this possible? Yeah. You I never know. Calvin Ridley signed jersey on pristine auction, $23 right now. It ends on Tuesday night if you want to scoop up that sweet deal. Derrick Henry signed jerseys up there for $85. That's also a Tuesday night auction. Hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Check them out. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Wide receiver wank wankings? <laughs> oh, no. Hey. Oh, no. Hey. 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 Rankings part two tomorrow. <laughs> Almost made it through the show. That's good. 
Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to find out what's going on. We'll post rankings, not wankings. Oh, no. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.